I mean, what I appreciate about him, for one thing, is just the sheer genius. I mean, he um, he saw problems, he saw questions that others didn't. He answered the questions that others saw and that he alone saw both with such extraordinary rigor. Sometimes the rigor gets overlooked because he, he didn't, you know, he, he didn't write like an, an analytic philosopher. I mean, but he saw the implications of things that others missed. And I think, um, you know, just for the sheer richness of the theology, I mean, if, if he's wrong, then he managed to come up with a better Christianity than Christianity, which would be a problem. You know, it would, it would, you know, it would suggest a certain uh, defect in the faith if that were the case. But he wasn't. Um, there, there's a kind of heroic intelligence in him, in that he knew that that following things, following issues to their to their utmost logical consequences, would lead to formulations that would look strange or disturbing um, to persons who, who regarded themselves as the guardians of orthodoxy, which meant, you know, a digest of the words of the fathers in the East, basically, uh, as filtered through increasingly at his time what was what was becoming the neopatristic synthesis, but but also filtered through certain confessional habits uh, that were rooted in Byzantine uh, scholasticism. But whatever the case, I mean, he, he, in a sense, he was uh, fortunate in that orthodoxy had, was in such disarray in his youth. You know, the orthodox thought of Russia at its best at that time and Soloviev before him and then Florensky at the same time. Uh, uh, or even figures like Komyakov who are problematic for their, you know, you say the sectarianism, but nonetheless, they were immersed in, in the fathers in the sense that they were, that, that they were aware of the sort of the speculative adventurousness of the greatest in the fathers that, you know, they didn't believe that the, that the fathers were just repeating the same thing over and over again. They could say that, you know, uh, but they weren't bound by any sort of catechism that just didn't exist. I mean, orthodoxy was was uh, was basically what happened in church and the theological and philosophical world around it enjoyed incredible speculative liberty. Now, this began to close down even in his lifetime because, you know, for historical reasons, because of the rise of the Soviet Union or whatever, there was a desire to create a canonical orthodoxy that was much more rigidly defined. Uh, and this included the, the triumph for a time of what we call neopolemism or the neopatristic synthesis. And in light of that, totally artificial, artificially narrow version of orthodoxy, Bulgakov seems especially exotic. He followed the trail of the argument to its lair and did not, did not relent and simply didn't allow himself to be deterred by lesser minds. I see Bulgakov as the, uh, the theologian of the 20th century who did the most to complete the patristic period, who, who saw what was missing from it and supplied answers that were left open. Uh, by the patristic period. He had no problem uh, uh, disagreeing with or correcting the fathers, uh, which, if, which for a certain sort of very unimaginative, ponderous, plodding sort of orthodox mind is, is unthinkable because for them, the fathers, scripture, the voice of God, it's all one sort of thing, it's saying always the same thing, even though manifestly that's not true. Um, so no, he put his own twist on it. He, uh, he remember he, uh, he he did not try to retreat to an earlier period in the tradition. He believed that that, that a living tradition is always changing. It's absorbing new impulses. It's dealing with new questions. All the great Russian thinkers of the time had been through the, sort of the had been dipped in the crucible of German Romanticism. Principally, the very late Schelling became 
the entry point. But for Bogakov, ultimately, Fichte is more important than either Hegel or Schelling in some ways, uh, though he has to be repristinated, re, re, uh, re, you know, fully rechristianized. And and he was, uh, you know, uh, Bogakov. You know, was also a trained economist. You, you, you know, he was very much a man, a modern thinker. He, he did not believe in simply trying to. He did not do what the Neapolitans did, which was to create an artificial orthodoxy and then try to assert it as an inviolable catechism, um, the way that uh, certain other celebrated figures of the twentieth century arguably did. 